thank you so much for joining today uh, tarun i i want to ask you if you could tell us and tell everyone what the last one year has meant for zydus wellness i think uh, last 14 15 months and last one year i'm taking a bit of liberty extending a few more months, starting from march and what really happened i think the it, it's been a uh, quite a bit of challenge for uh, us uh, initially we were quite uh, should i say not fully prepared or we thought we were not and we were quite uh, unhappy with the way things were shaping up it was very challenging uh, because i i'll 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 take you to the backdrop of what we were so we had just integrated our craft science business in 2019 i think a bit couple of years ahead of what we were wanting to do so by end of december 19 we did a very fast execution of our integration so when we started 2020 in january i remember talking to the large team and i said look the world the wuka world with all those uncertainties and volatilities you are going to deal with all those but you know we have integrated we have leaner sharper and a much larger organization so we are going to do much better and uh, so we had set up fairly you know aggressive task of building the business in a certain way and when march came it just took us by a, everyone by surprise we were no yeah. exceptions and uh, i think the first initial phase was you know let's put our head down and let's get over with it it'll probably last few months china has over seems to be you know overcoming it it may take one month two month three month protect your uh, uh, people which was the first uh, protect your business pnls etc but also resp- be responsible for the communities there are like 25000 farmers who give milk for at our aligarh plant so you have to be responsible for you know not just your internal employees but ecosystem that depends on you you have to get over those two three months through the ecosystem uh, and then there were essential products so you know there was one place where uh, the local uh, administration was wanting to shut down the plant mm-hmm. but we realized our products were essential so it was more of crisis management keeping your team aligned managing those i think after a couple of months i think uh, a lot of uh, stability a lot of <laughs> uh, dealing with the new normal had come through uh, i don't know what's new normal because there are different definitions that may exist but the fact was you were more centered you were more prepared for dealing with those things but first i think 3 4 weeks were very hard for everyone in in something which none of us had seen or imagined uh, but i think subsequently we have dealt with it far better uh, even when the second wave came i think from a supply chain back end with our uh, uh, ecosystem we were better prepared it's just that you know some things you cannot overcome if there is a lockdown there is a lockdown yeah cannot so the government was better prepared government actually went uh, did quite a bit of things their own learning which helped us but uh, uh, one thing that really i i i when i started about this integration piece i look back was that uh, while we missed the big thing that i was hoping to do if we had not done the integration at the pace we did and really uh, became aggressive in uh, you know reducing our cost structures a lot of organizations after going through that hit went back and to the drawing board and said i need to cut my cost structures i need to do this we were already you know better prepared and that's why i think we came out stronger uh, yeah. especially after the first wave uh, we actually went ahead when people were thinking how will they run the organization we went about 55 60% increase in our direct distribution we ramped up our e-commerce so we were i think far better and more agile and ready to take on the challenges and that's why i think it's a it's a hard story and it's also a, some sweet spot sitting there that it pushed us to the next level fairly quickly and uh, it also tested some of our things that we had done so it's been an interesting journey painful because what we've seen around our near dear ones uh, our yeah. employees people who've got affected and uh, uh, i mean some of them have lost their lives also and it's very very painful but uh, on the other side it is also uh, you know this pandemic has also segregated the if i were to say a, a cliche term men from the boys that if you are really up there you're doing your stuff right you can deal with disruptions and we i think it gave me a satisfaction that we could and as the ceo as someone at the helm of the uh, the company the brand a question i would like to ask is that how do you maintain that brand equity how do you continue to maintain that brand equity in india 
so so i think let me ask this uh, answer this question in two different ways so one is uh building the zedis wellness brand for prospective employees various stakeholders and how do we maintain uh the organizational brand or organization uh, so that uh, all our stakeholders stay anchored and committed to it and how do we maintain the brand equity of individual brands i think uh, one common theme of course will be authenticity but i think what is part of zedis wellness dna uh, and i i think when i came about 6 years back and i recognized this uh, and that's why I, i kind of articulated it goes in our some of the annual reports is uh, you know our dna has been uh, building emergent uh, you know uh, brands or um, participate in emerging categories and with a do good brand so everything we do we try to be do good rather than just superficial so mm. so you will find that even when i am participating in skin care and you know we we will talk about experiential stuff but whether you took at ever youth scrub or a peel off these are things that really work when you look at complan uh, it's actually higher quality of nutrition than uh, most of our peers and we can you know so so while the market competition will be fought on your execution your proposition and other things but the underlying foundation has to be authenticity and some things that really work scientifically proven in what mm. we are doing so so each of our products and we are we are really a pioneer for across all our portfolio practically and leader in five out of six categories that we operate in uh, so we've been able to do that and therefore while they may look like niches and can become hopefully larger categories as we as time moves on but one thing that we think we will stay consistent on is that uh, deliver to consumers what we promise and i think that something that flows through all our products yeah, our execution and uh, at our overall organization also and if we can do this i think we we will be uh, able to keep our <laughs> brand alive for a much longer sustained period of time you know but i have a question over there see you yeah. have this challenge because the brand is already so good right and then and and, and and as as you said and thanks for articulating it it's the be good do good brand uh, which it clearly is but you are today a leader you today the brand is loved and 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 and, and what you're saying that scientifically proven also now in that place where you are there is a chance of being complacent right and i want to understand as a leader how do you ensure that you are at the top of your game and you continue to be at the top of your game because the competition today in the world and 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 tarun i'm asking this because we exist in the startup world and today if you look at the in your segment also there are so many emergent d2c brands coming in right there's so many things happening how do you think about this so so i think it's a it's a very valid question and it is some it's a question i answer to myself and to my team every day so so i'll give you uh, like i mentioned to you we are not just the pioneers we are also been able to maintain leadership now the responsibility of leader is not to sit on your market share and say okay i'm done i'm comfortable i make good money and uh, i keep the investors happy the fact is that we have to uh, be relevant to today's you know the consumers are changing so fast every day the fact that yeah. d2c today is possible in 10 years back we would have laughed at somebody what are you talking about d2c uh, in fact e-commerce and fmcg 10 years 15 years back if you we were doing this conversation as i would have said it, it looks a little tough it looks a little unpractical impractical but today it's not just practical it is happening better yeah. and it's going at a different pace so consumers are changing and uh, you can't sit on your past laurels and say look i have a 94% share in sugar free or a 60% share in glucon d or or likes of it the consumers are gonna if you do not are not relevant to the consumers of tomorrow uh, you're gonna become irrelevant or you're gonna yeah. lose your uh, space in the sun and you're gonna lose your opportunity of building this brand to the next level so i'll give you example uh, so sugar free when we were a 93% market share now uh, and the point was that look everything is fine uh, you you make de- reasonable money the competition has not been successful against you uh but we say, still said look the world is changing and we need to embrace the naturalness because there are still consumers who do not want this because they believe you are not safe or natural though i do not believe because there is enough scientific evidence but you are not fighting we will address it but more important thing was how do you get a larger set of consumers so you are not fighting for market share you are saying how do i increase the pie how do i reach out to serve a much larger set of consumers uh who are unaddressed so far in the marketplace 
so therefore as a leader i see that our role remains not just competing for market share but growing the pie uh, and that i think is a one single minded approach that i expect all my brand teams to work with of course complan we are a little uh, behind and therefore i'm hoping the leader will also do that task but i think largely as a organization we are very focused on building the categories getting new consumers reaching out to underserved consumers my next question did you know in fact in your latest annual report you have acknowledged that as a larger num- as a larger number of people are ordering online digital has become one of the preferred channels for brand communication you know how that how is it translating for you when you look at customer outreach when you look at engaging with the new consumer today so so uh, that's an interesting part i think consumers are also behaving very differently across different categories Hmm. so some categories got embraced much faster uh, you would see i mean even 3 years 4 years back diapers was a large category so we don't participate in it skin care was little ahead of the block some other within segments within food got picked up much faster the fact is that uh, uh, the last 14 15 months has given a kind of uh, adrenaline rush to the e-commerce play the digital play because the offline world the access got limited and therefore there has been a disproportionate enhancement there so the way we look at digital is uh, there are uh, it's creating a multiple opportunities of uh, engaging with the consumers both in terms of how we influence the consumers so that they can understand us better uh, and not just you know just putting an ad out there but also reaching out in certain ways today gamification is coming back and becoming big uh, you know we can work on content the other is in terms of access uh, in terms of purchase and that has seen a disproportionate increase more than 200% increase in terms of consumers buying from the e-commerce channel uh, the whole channel is changing so much uh, uh, the whole ways of uh, consumer behaving is uh, is changing so much and they are buying from different types of channels and different uh, ways so we are fully out there ready to uh, you know get there so from engaging them getting them early on to uh, you know fulfilling the needs and uh, 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 selling on the uh, digital platform and we are also taking this whole digital journey to the back end also so i i really if i if you ask me i'm not seeing just from a consumer point of view i'm saying how can i digitalize my whole organization where end to end we could have a much sharper much better you know cons- consumer service uh, offer to the consumers are you creating a separate team or are you doing the reorientation of the whole company or are you getting some agency like or are you doing all these three so so i think our journey on digital really started about 4 5 years back uh, so that one time we we did get a couple of specialists one in sitting in marketing to do the digital marketing stuff uh, being there in uh, various uh, touch points bloggers youtube all all the mm. stuff on the other side we realized uh, when we had given the task of uh, uh, e-commerce to the montre team because there is this kind of organized trade they really didn't get it so we 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 really uh, got a person who was who had worked in the e-commerce environment on the other side of the table and we we got him to come here and said let's t- set it up and we actually created a should i say a small startup inside mm. uh, uh, with a direct access to me and uh, my sales leader rather than uh, just creating layers around it so yeah, there was yeah. a fair level of empowerment and uh, we said we don't have to measure it like, like on productivity levels just the way i would measure a uh, a general trade guy because this is a startup this was few lakhs here and there so <laughs> how do i uh, so so we we really gave a very free open space and we started building it bit by bit i think over a period of time there is a dedicated team which services uh which needs these consumers we have a, a joint business planning and all those things with the e-commerce team but it does not happen just there even the back end servicing so even uh, supply chain co- uh, commercial departments have also put spokes who work for these uh, yeah. similarly on the marketing side it's not just having a person who's a digital marketing uh, you know uh, services guy but the ma- ma- brand managers category heads they have to think so if the whole organization has to think but of course there are specialists to serve this but i think it's been a journey for us and now i think we are far ready for the future changes as they come 
Now, the question I have is that your international business has seen a growth of more than 200% during this financial year uh, and accounts for more than 3% of the consolidated revenue. Yeah. Uh, tell us about this. So, <clears throat> so this is again about five, six years back, six years back when I joined. And we had a little bit of, uh, you know, exports, which uh, somebody was doing more on. Uh, one, one of the things I felt was that in the categories we were operating at that time, we had not acquired uh, craft Heinz and we just had sugar-free uh, Neutralite and every youth. One of the things that I said was that we are strong category players in this. We have our knowledge in these categories were comparable to global knowledge. Hmm. Uh, you could look at sugar substitutes, uh, which were available in US and uh, European markets. We, we understood those categories reasonably well, whether it went through the health platform where it was a prescription for a diabetics, or it was low calorie and uh, way to a better uh, healthy, uh, healthier lifestyle. So we understood the lifestyle as well as this part reasonably well. Similarly, in neutralite, similar uh, in butter substitutes or every youth uh, in facial cleansing. So we said, look, my knowledge and my cost structures allow me to have a global play. Now, at least some of the markets do offer us an opportunity to grow. And then you also look at the environment. Most of the Indian consumer businesses have anything between 15 to 55% businesses coming from outside India. And some of the markets were absolutely fitting in to take our products abroad. So we said, why don't we plan for this and start doing it organically and uh, have a plan to... So, so it started with uh, hiring somebody based out of Dubai and not in India so that you're not bound by what I think, but you look at the market and operate from the market. So yeah. it was one person uh, who, who understood this whole uh, lay of the land, got him on board. Now we have a whole team which is building up and we've been able to uh, also integrate, you know, Complan in different markets was different play by Kraft Heinz and there were no one business unit. They didn't even look like each other. So we've been able to integrate all of that. We've been able to grow sugar-free and sugar-free beyond sugar substitutes into chocolates uh, when we launched the Sugar Free Green, which is our Stevia version, actually SQs were launched for international markets, which India took later because those markets were a little ahead of us. Mm. So, so, so clearly we're saying that I'm ready to innovate what is required for those markets, uh, build on basic understanding and a strong global, uh, globally competitive cost structure that my plants have. And I could use them to build the business. So while 3% may look small given what we are comparing, but the fact is that we started from zero and it's all organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm, yeah. I'm following a reasonably profitable model where we're not saying it, it is a free for all, just go and invest. So we're building business responsible way and we're doing taking right steps to build it. Uh, of course, at some point of time, if there was a right, some acquisition, we'll, we'll add it on. But right now, I think we have a journey where my wish list is organically, we can take it to 8 to 10%, which will both create a strong uh, brands in some of these key markets as well as uh, innovations to build these brands and uh, yeah. be a valuable contributor to our business. And I mean, today when, when, when we get uh, Ministry of Food Processing saying that, you know, we want to support Indian brands going up abroad and Bharat, I think we are, we are right there to, you know, chasing uh, some of those dreams. Wow, right. but, this is, but this is very, very, yeah, this is very... <laughs> this is br <laughs> brands of India, brands yeah. of India, you know, because the question is that where are the Indian brands globally? And then and, and you write in a space where we don't see Indian brands. So yeah, this is big. Which countries are you present in right now? So, so uh, our major focus has been uh, Middle East Africa, though we are also present in Southeast Asia and uh, uh, New Zealand as well. Uh, but uh, I'm uh, also counting on the South Asia, which is the Nepal, Bangladesh, uh, Sri Lanka, of course, which we uh, ourselves extend to. So Middle East Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia. So that's what. Yeah. How do you look at the overall stakeholders in your in your ecosystem, and especially in the wake of pandemic? Have things changed? Be it the distribution, supply chain, way of running the company, and there are so many stakeholders. And as you said, that it's not just the the you know the plants and the factories that you operate in; it's the ecosystem around that also. Has anything changed for you in the way you're looking at your stakeholders? So, so uh, <clears throat> yes and no. So. At a fundamental level, the strategies remain consistent and I hope they should. 
what it creates is probably uh, new paths or new uh, uh, you know levers to run harder faster some of those things also it opens up probably new opportunities for us so so uh, now first if i were to look at a set of uh, you know stakeholders for our entire value chain uh, through the pandemic i think while i'm very focused on building a consumer centric organization being a consumer products company i think one learning that i've got over last few months is you can deliver to the consumers if you first take care of it people yeah. are the most you know crucial link in your whole organization so so i think the people first uh, part in for a consumer centric org- for any organization because you are you you not the organization is the people who build this whole thing so so the welfare of people has become much higher it's always been i, I always thought i was a good people manager but i think it just made me relook at are we doing enough for our people are we taking mm-hmm. care of them and uh, you know that's that's worst thing that i would say that we have changed or i have personally driven or uh, personally changed and also pushed my team to look at this uh, with a very uh, different lens of saying are we doing enough for the people for the safety of the f- people for the welfare of the people and don't stop at people but their families mm-hmm. because uh, my salesman sitting in uh, gorakhpur is not just him but he earns for his family so just be conscious of that so so we've done you know that's one stakeholder i think we've uh, focused our attention uh, secondly uh, i think uh, is the communities which depend upon us uh, you know when when the pandemic came and the whole thing was uh, disrupted one of things that came to us was look uh, and i'll give you two example which was very very uh, important and we took calls on that there are 25000 farmers who are providing milk every day morning Mm. now the point was stop everything if the business is not you're not selling nothing is happening but you know you you have a faith you believe humanity will prevail you will uh, finally see the light of the day because end of march you didn't know which way it land but yeah. we said okay things will happen come back to normal so keep buying the milk you may not need for to, uh, today but you can obviously convert it into uh, the inter- uh, intermediate products and uh, save it for the future so we continued our milk sourcing there 25000 farmers whose livelihoods mattered several dairies in that area shut down for that period of time we continued and we we said we'll just put sops for the safety of everyone our team who was uh, acting there the farmers who were de- going there uh, but we continued and i think i'm fairly proud of it because it just looks like business is normal but Uh, you know looking back it it matters second uh, example that i would give on these communities part will be uh, our uh, you know vendors are you know people who help us uh, put things together for example our uh, cnf partners there are 23 of them uh, across the country so uh, you know i i actually didn't even just normally i don't need to interact once in a while if i'm traveling i meet them i know their profiles but they i actually asked that i wanted to meet all of them on a zoom call and reached out to them that we need to get the business up and running please tell us what are your challenges and i engaged directly with them and i, I didn't leave it only for, to my supply chain to work but i said they should hear directly from me so that reach out but it didn't stop there we have also in last few months ensured that each of the people are, i think there are 200 300 people we extended certain insurance covers for them through well people who are dead so we we said look it's not just about taking care of our people where we did what we had to do in terms of financials or any other things that we did but i'm saying we had to go that extra mile whether our salesmen who were out there uh, working in the field in this difficult situation so they were not our salesmen they are not our employees they are distributor salesmen providing whatever financial assistance hardship allowance similarly our cnfs so the the extended arms of our partners who actually whose livelihoods depend upon us yeah that became a extremely crucial thing for us and i think that uh, i i think we've done uh, we've been become fairly conscious of uh, that piece the third piece is uh, you know uh, is about uh, so far like i mentioned essential products we have some of our products are essential so business is important but the you know your purpose becomes that much more important when you realize that your products matter to the consumer so people were sitting at home and then they need more uh, you know 
sugar free our sales improved at that point of time so they said they needed more sugar sugar free uh, they were buying uh, taking more tea in this so we said look if consumers want a healthier lifestyle they are not able to exercise uh, can i uh, provide my products uh, and service those uh, needs well so is ensuring that my plants run i am able to service those so third was about how we treat our products with with more importance from a part of uh, you know providing these uh, products to the consumers when they need it so those were some of the views of course employees partners I, i mean those were some of the things that we really impacted but if i were to go one extra mile uh, you know in the in those extreme summer last year we realized there were all these health workers and policemen uh, in the uh. outside in the sun telling people not to come or helping them so we actually said look my glucon d is uh, you know a solution for consumers who are you know out there in the sun but these are the people who don't have all the resources actually my team which who interacted with them uh, said you know we have had several views on you know all these cops who who are who seen as tough guys who are not very supportive certainly the respect for them shot up and you can see all that uh, stuff going on social uh, media yeah so we said why don't we reach out to them i don't want anything in return uh, we we didn't really make out anything out of it out of anything we said let's give a certain amount of packets or a certain thing for each of our team members to go and give it to them what it did was we reached out they were very happy it also energized my team who felt the importance of giving yeah. so it was not zaidus wellness that was giving they felt that on behalf of zaidus wellness they were empowered to give to people who were making a difference at that point yeah. so those few things with you know communities uh, social impact that you could do i think those were uh, clearly very exciting times on learning on you know you could do good and uh, feel uh, good about it tarun i i want to ask you have you seen anything change in you as a leader because of the journey that you have made in the last 14 15 months i i've become more conscious of the purpose uh, of the you know what we're trying to build if i were to say uh, the fact that uh, you know if i look at it and i think we i tried to articulate about 2 3 years back there was an internal workshop and i was trying to articulate but if i were to say uh, and each of these examples i gave you each of the things we talk about i think i have and you could wake me up at 2 o'clock in the night and i would say i am very excited about what we are creating for the future for the organization uh, the whole digital journey i can tell about the digital investments in the front uh, front end or digital investments at the back end to make uh, full uh, you know to make the whole organization uh, better and sharper but even more impactful or more uh, valuable for me has been that uh, the you know happiness i can create uh, for our consumers by giving them products that uh, they love uh, the fact that uh, you know you can contribute to livelihoods livelihoods of uh, thousands of uh, you know uh, people who depend upon us uh, through our yeah. partners uh, the fact that uh, you know employees uh, hundreds of employees uh, look forward to work for us uh, you know and uh, probably uh, we've also used this time to also innovate uh, aggressively so innovation and execution we have demonstrated some very agile executions also so innovation and execution that we do uh, which probably our uh, competitors will also respect so i'm i'm thinking about a organization that we are probably hopefully building uh, which uh, will uh, impact the whole ecosystem all our stakeholders in a more purposeful way i think that's really what uh, how what's really keeping me energized which is something i i become far more conscious of today rather than just saying that i have a business to run but it is a business to build it is an organization to build is a culture which we want to uh, you know foster are you engaging with startups uh, as a company as a brand so there are two or three uh, different ways of engaging with startups uh, first of all a lot of uh, uh, reasonable size companies are saying that can we become you know a place to go to to for investments on startup that i don't think we are ready for or we are we will evaluate case to case but we don't have a venture fund for so we are not mm. doing 
but how we are engaging with startups and i, I think i just had a chat with one of those uh, guys who's uh, just 3 4 years and doing some uh, very interesting uh, supply chain solutions hmm uh, so i had uh, i met the founder uh, over a similar call and we were talking about uh, he was he is anyway uh, has shared uh, his team has reached out to my team for uh, uh, possible uh, solutions for our requirements so we are we are engaging with startups especially because some of them are coming with some new unique solutions which were not earlier available and and we are very very happy doing that we are also engaging with startups in several of our digital initiatives uh, so so yes uh, but do i have a structured startup uh, reach out i don't uh, but yes we are engaging in different parts in different ways and i'm uh, fully aware of each of those uh, uh, engagements that are happening some of which like this one i mentioned in the supply chain piece uh, which certainly will happen uh, sooner or later uh, but there is uh, i think it will become a part of way of doing things because startups are changing a lot of things in their environment yeah yeah and and, and uh, there is there is no shying away for it but I, one thing i have done is i we are trying to also imbibe the startup culture in some of the pieces that we built i gave you the example of we built the e-commerce so we we tried to co- create a kind of uh, walls around that piece for a few people so that they could really not work through uh, a certain uh, bureaucracy is a wrong word but still an organizational way of doing how do i move at a very certain at a faster pace learn at a faster pace that a startup can do and my whole organization will not do so creating those uh, uh, oases in a desert or islands of uh, uh, startup culture within the organization which i believe will help the organization become yeah. far ready for the future because startups are a great uh, way of doing some of those things breaking the molds is there anything in life other than work which you enjoy <laughs> because <laughs> I see you clearly enjoy your work because it brings a lot of purpose, and you are doing very phenomenally well. Are there more things to life than work, and what are those things? I have two young kids, and they they bring a lot of joy beyond work for me. So, so obviously, I I think the biggest uh, uh, thing I look forward to beyond my work is obviously my family. I think uh, reaching out to my kids. Uh, uh, makes a big difference spending time with them uh, learning with them quite often they wait for to play something new that they've bought so open up those things so doing that together yeah. that that certainly is uh, something that makes a big difference of course few other hobbies but that's i think that's what i have limited time for <laughs> given uh, the stretch but uh, yeah a little bit of reading and uh, stuff that that happens and last is that as a ceo of zydus wellness uh, what you feel every day is the most exciting thing and and then you could say that hey i can keep on doing this i think i i'll go back to uh, something i mentioned earlier i think the the excitement of creating the organization uh, creating impacting millions of lives uh, uh, and uh, looking at the future and saying that uh, we did this i think those things really you know get me excited <clears throat> look forward to coming to office look forward to doing things look forward to i think that that's a and and, and the huge uh, excitement at the workplace where people are uh, doing i think some very interesting stuff so and uh, being able to uh, you know work with them participate with them so we have a fairly uh, positively charged team uh, and to work with them to uh, you know those things uh, make me look forward to coming to office every day look forward to working every day and i think i can go on and on on this <laughs> you know what tarun i have to tell you this that a leader is a reflection of the company and we get everyone watching today will get a sense of what you're building what why you're enjoying because there is a sense of a extreme authenticity there is joy there is purpose and of course there is a super brand the company that you run and are going international uh, thank you it was a very very uh, interesting inspiring and a conversation where we all learned thank you thanks a lot yeah well, thank you thanks for having me and my privilege to be on this 